Well, welcome back to another episode of uh, Parking for Beginners. Last time I saw us out on the bank, sadly we didn't catch anything, but showed you how to set up a simple ledger rig with minimal gear, minimal outlay, and hopefully with kit you've already got in your, your carp fishing kits and your barbel fishing kits. Today we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to set up a simple float rig. So straight away again we're going to be using our carp rod and a free spool carp reel. What we do is we get the line threaded through that and I'll show you how to set up a simple float rig. But we've had to move a little bit, the wind was blowing right through the swim and the, um, the audio for setting up the rod would have been terrible so here we go now second attempt setting up a basic dead bait float rig for you to keep your pike in so once again as i said we, we've got our cart rod cart reel three small reel we threaded our line on 23 pan soft steel camo or any brand you prefer i'm not advertising anything i just just that's just what i use if you want to use braid make sure it's 80 to 100 pound braid your mono, anything over 20. Now ordinarily, all things being equal, <laughs> I would use a drilled bullet for my basic float fishing rigs. But today the river's a bit flooded, so we're going to go a little bit of extra beef to hold bottom. First things first. show you how to tie your stop knot in a minute at the right depth but first of all you want to before you put anything on one buffer bead any you like I use high vis it doesn't bother the pike you can use green camo anyone you want as long as it's a bead that acts between a buffer between your float and your stop knot that goes on They're all types of pipe floats. I only use sliding floats. And what you do is you run your you run your line straight through your float. That goes up your line. I've got another buffer bead. That goes on your line. That's going to act between, as a buffer between your float and the swivel for your trace. So that goes up the line. Now normally I would use a, a drilled bullet. People use their meg weights as well. I, use, I tend to use drilled bullets. I've got them in all different sizes. The drilled bullet I have will probably hold bottom. In fact, I'm going to use a drilled bullet. So when you're fishing, you've got to be prepared to adapt and change and go with things you think and feel right. Now, ordinarily, you wouldn't be fishing in flooded conditions. And the idea of this video is to show you how to set up a basic pike dead bait rig for float fishing. So, on the line, goes the drilled bullet. That is completely resistant. For the reason I use a drilled bullet, it's like an inline lead, but it doesn't lay flat. I don't want it to lay flat, I want it to roll around when I'm fishing. Because if you're fishing rivers and stuff, sometimes you want that bait to roll a little bit with the current before it settles. 
you know, it's a uh, flood water like we've got today. You might want a flat pair or flat inline or gripper to hit that deck and stay there. But I wanted to show you how I set up my basic rig. So that's it so far. Look. Feed, float, feed, weight. Weight of choice. Mine's a See, I don't think you can go wrong with a drill bullet. I think it gives you the best indication. That's why I use them. But that's just personal choice. So now all you want to do is you top, want to tie on. So now all you want to do, tie on your tracer choice. Now, as I said before, if you've gone out to the shops and you've bought your traces and their twin trebles, no big deal. You tie them on exactly the same as I'm tying on my hand, homemade rigs, single hooks. You will have a either a swivel on the end or you'll have a quick link adapter in that case you would tie your swivel or a loop to your line to attach it but I prefer straight onto the swivel again not a choice I put it through the loop I give it one two three four five six Seven. I give it seven turns, hold it tight at the end of the turn, you'll see a little gap between the first loop and the swivel, pass it through that gap, pass it through the first loop, There's, you'll see a loop before the swivel, first loop, pass it through it, always moisten your knots, pull down. Give it one good tug on that end, give it one good tug on that end. That knot is done, it's not going anywhere. Strong, one of the strongest knots in fishing. Tidy it up with a pair of scissors, and all you've got to do now is tie your stop knot. So, there you have your float, your weight, your trace. Now, I'm going to show you how to tie a stop knot. Doesn't matter where you tie it on because you're going to adjust it. Doesn't matter where you tie it on, as long as it's above the <laughs> above the bead and the float. I have been like I've been in a rush once and I tied it in the wrong place. So doesn't matter where you put it on the line because you're going to adjust it to the depth of the venue you're fishing. There are plenty of on the internet because I don't think I'm going to be able to show you brilliantly because I'm not. I'm not, I'm not a professional cameraman or anything like that. And the way I tie my stop knots on are a simple whipping knot. So I get my power gun, or you can just snip off some mono from a spare reel, doesn't matter. I use power gum, make a nice loop like that. Put it onto your main line. And you want to tie a whipping knot. I do seven whips. I pass it through the loop and I pull down tight with both ends. And there you have it. One stop knot. Obviously, you can't have it on a line like that. You might think that's a lot of wastage, but I'd rather tie, I'd rather tie it first go than fiddle about with bits that are too small. You want to cut it, so you have two tags. Once you tidy it up, then you have your knot on your line, two tags. You can have them a bit smaller than that, I, I like a long tag. Might catch in the eye a little bit when you're casting, but I don't mind that. I don't want anything slipping past it. And that is your basic float rod set up. And what we're going to do now, we're going to bait it up and see if we can catch a fish with it. <laughs> Once again, my single hook rigs. 
I'll leave the link in the description on how to tie them. They're on a loop so the hook can move 360. Bait of choice today it's a roach. I go through the bottom jaw, out through the snout of the fish, and that's it, it's on. We're gonna get this cast out and we're gonna catch ourselves a pike this time on a rig we've made up. And that is it, that is your simple float rig. All you gotta do now is plumb the depth, get the right depth. Now I know at the moment we're fishing in 12 foot of water. But it is quite flooded, so I'm going to over depth it a bit. So I'm going to set the stop knot at about 14 foot so it doesn't get dragged up, the float doesn't get dragged under by the tow. Here we are, genuine, that's my rig. Just showed you how to tie it. Stop knot, look at that, it's like two foot. So, first thing you do is you're going to move your stop knot up the line. It passes through those eyes, no problem. So here we are, just about to cast. Just to show you, it is the rig we're using. There's a stop knot between those two eyes. And all we're gonna do is drop that in just there and there it is holding bottom same alarm we were using last time free spool on look it looks like it's in slack water oh you can even see the stop knot well above the float And that's where we want it, in that slack water. There's several types of floats. You, I mean, it's, floats catch more fishermen than they do fish. <laughs> There's endless amount of pike floats you can use. You have a traditional loaded bunk. Also, brass bottom there, weighted. Very small swivel on the bottom eye. No, I can't type a loaded pipe float, that's a loaded pencil. It's your standard fox pencil. And then you have your, these are, these are my personal favourites. Inline, little Brennan. The fox do them as well. They're, they are brilliant little floats, they are. Again, the inline. Again, inline, they're cheap C ones, you can get them on eBay and all sorts of places, dirt cheap. They're in line again. It's just a stand, that is actually a, a carp waggler, but I use that as a perch float. <laughs> you have live baiting for perch. But my favourite go to's are, they are in lines. I mean, I love them. They're so versatile. I mean, I showed you how I set up mine for a static dead bait. The water's pumping through, and now I could. If I wanted to, uh, instead of putting a bead and a stop knot up there, I could have threaded on a, a float stop, put the float on, threaded on another float stop, have no weight at all, trace, and my bait hooked on a single hook. I could add that set whatever depth I wanted, three, four, five, six foot, I mean along here, ten foot, eight foot, and it it will trot through the swim. And you 
may pick up the bonus fish. It can be quite a devastating method that when the water's pumping through. It's a bit too lively today. I'm not going you know, in as the water's too dark. So but sometimes when this is you know when this is raining off or a drain's running off, that's a deadly method. As I say, when you've when you've as I say, when you run your line through, instead of putting on a bead, thread on a float stop, put a small in line float on, thread on another float stop, and that way you can adjust your float stops to the depth you want to trot through on. I only just need the weight of the fish, the dead bait to just flick it out, let it run through. You'll see that a mile away. You know, it goes, starts going against the current or it goes under and whizzes the way, you know you've got a fish on. But that, that is a very good method, that one. But today we're static deads. We ain't had much luck since we've cast out, but it's early. <laughs>